Hello everyone and welcome to this Python for Automation Testing series and this is our 18th tutorial and in this particular tutorial we will learn about the tuples in detail so let's begin. In our previous tutorial we learned that what are the list. Here in this particular tutorial we will learn about the tuples in detail. So tuples are basically an ordered collection, ordered collection of elements and these are basically enclosed with these small brackets. And every element inside this one is separated by comma. For example, 1, comma, 2, comma, 3. So that's how we can create a tuple. And these tuples are basically immutable. So immutable means that they cannot be changed once they are created. So we cannot change, we cannot add an item, we cannot remove an item. And now these are very useful because they are memory efficient and they are safer to use because when you want to ensure that the collection of the values remains constant throughout the program. So in this particular case, the tuples are the best to use in contrast to the Python list. So now let's go to the PyCharm here and let me create one new file here. I will name it as Python tuples. Okay. And now the first thing is that we need to learn how to create a tuple. So basically I will say tuple is equals to in small brackets, one comma two comma three. Okay. And we can have a tuple for the strings, for the mix items as well. So I will say tuple one is equals to, I will say a, c, comma, B, D. So these are the strings basically. And I say T, R. Okay. So these are all the tuples. And tuples also contain the mix items. So I will create one more tuple here. Tuple 2 is equals to. So let me copy this from here and paste it here. And the second value, I'm getting a numeric value here. And I, I can take a boolean value here as well. So these all are the tuples here. Now, uh, if you want to create a tuple with a single element, there is a trick to do this. So for example, if I go here and if I say tuple 4 is equals to 5, now this is not a tuple here. This will consider as a simple variable here. But if we want to convert this into a single element tuple, then I need to give a comma here. Okay. Now, but before that, let's go here and print type and let's find the type of tuple 4. And if I run this one, so you see that it's saying that it's integer, right? is con considering it as a variable type of integer, not a tuple. But if I change here, comma here, and if I run this one, now you will see that this is a tuple now. We can also create an empty tuple. So for example, I can go here. Let me copy this one and paste it here. Let me change it to tuple 5. And without providing anything, we can create a tuple. And if I try to print this tuple, what happens? It will be printing the empty tuple here. So if I remove this, if I say tuple five, and if I run this one, it should so move this line. And now run this one, you see that this is a empty tuple. Now in order to access the elements of the tuple, we can use the indexing over here, just like we did in the list. Okay, so let me copy this tuple from here and paste it here. And let me add more items in this one. And I'm naming it as tuple six. Now, if I want to access the first value, so the first value is one which is on the index zero. So how can I access this one? Simply, I will say tuple six, 
and the index is zero. So this will print a value one and it's printing the AC. Why it is printing AC? Okay, so we are actually using a tuple one here. So it's basically a tuple six and you see the one is printed. If we want to print three, so it's zero, one, two, so index two. And if I run this one, you see the answer is three. We can also do a negative indexing here, which means minus one, minus two. So minus one means that we are accessing the last element. Okay, so if I say minus one, this should print the seven here. Okay, and you see the answer is seven here. So in this way, you can access the different elements of the table. Now you can also slice the tuple here as well. So simply I will say tuple six and if I want to slice, so I say one comma one column three. So you will see that it will slice the value between these. So it slices the value between these. So one and three. Okay, so zero, one, two three so one to three we have the answer two comma three here okay we can also perform different operations on tuple here so let me create one tuple here tuple seven tuple and let me copy this one and paste it here let me name it as tuple 7 and it contains 1 2 3 let me copy this one and paste it here and let me name it as a so i will change the items here 4 5 6 now what you can do is that you can concatenate two or more tuples using a plus operator okay so i will say Combine equals to tuple 7 plus tuple 8. And if I go here and print combine, so you will see that it will give me a combined result of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 6. So that's how you can concatenate one or more tuples here. Okay, then what you can do is that you can do a repetition as well. And repetition can be done using a static operator, which is a multiplication operator. So for tuple seven, if I want repetition here, so repeat is equals to then tuple seven. And how many times I need to repeat this one? For example, I want to repeat it for the three times. So three times means that one to three, then one to three, and then one to three. So this will be coming up for the three times. Okay. So if I go here and print here. So you will see that it will give us an answer. One to three, one to three, and one to three. Okay, and we can also do a membership check. For example, if you want to check that an element exists in a tuple or not, this can be done using the in keyword. Okay, so let me create one more tuple here. Tuple tuple nine is equals to. Then I'm taking characters here. A then comma b then comma c now what i need to do is that i need to check that if a exists in this tuple one or not okay so print tuple nine and i want to check what i want to check i want to check a a in tuple nine now this will give me a true or the false if the value exists in the tuple it will return a true value 
if not it will return a false value so let me copy this one and paste it here and let me provide a value which does not exist in this particular table now if i run this one you will see that the first one returns as true and the second one returns as false okay now furthermore we can also count the elements present in this particular double so simply print then we have uh, this length function and inside this one i need to pass the double okay and if i run this one so we'll get the answer three because this contain three items here so that's how you can work with the tuples and also if you want to change this one we have already covered the session on the typecasting but if, but if you haven't seen this one you can convert your tuple into a list so if i want to convert this one so we have a tuple then i need to create a list so equals to then we have the list and inside this i need to pass this one and then if i print this one list you will see that this has been converted to a list so in some cases you might need to convert the tuple into the list so you should be aware how you can convert it so let me summarize today's session so we learned that what are tuples we have created multiple tuples we have seen that we have how we can check the type of the data type how we can actually create a tuple with a single value how we can create a tuple with an empty value then we have seen that how to access the different values using the index even the negative indexing we have also seen that how we can concatenate the tuples we have seen how we can do the repetition of the tuples we have seen the membership in the tuples and the finally we have learned about the length and how we can convert the tuple into the list thank you so much for watching this tutorial if you like our content then do like comment share and subscribe our channel once again thank you so much and see you in the next tutorial